Welcome back to the Demon Slayer Gamer Channel. We're going to be continuing our Final Fantasy XIV Dungeon Guide series today. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Swallow's Compass. The beginning of this dungeon starts off pretty slow, having to take each of the groups almost by itself. You can gra drag the first group with the second, but after this you'll be taking it group by group. Each area will have different AoEs and effects based on the element it represents. The first one will be water, and there will be several APA units that will constantly be casting water that, that you can interrupt. The large metal units will cast explosion when they are about to die and will need to be focused down so this cast does not finish. The second area will represent the element Earth, and during this time there will be several circular AoEs which you'll just need to avoid standing in. The third area will represent Wind. This one will put several targeted AoEs on different party members that will need to move away from the rest of the group and they will leave residual AoEs where they explode. After all three are dead you'll move back to the front of the dungeon where you'll then be able to access the dragon seal and the first boss. The first boss is supposed to represent the element of fire, so when he casts Clout of Tengu, it will do a party-wide fire-based attack that will also summon fire AoEs that will move around the platform if they get too close to someone will explode. Each of these also reduces the max amount of HP a party member has if they are hit by them. Yama Kagura will just be a large line AoE that you'll need to move out of. When you cast Vile of the Tengu, you'll want to look away from when you cast Wile of the Tengu, you'll want to look away from the boss to avoid this. Otherwise you will become confused, causing your character to move in different directions from what you're trying to move it in. The second time he casts Clout of Tengu, instead of summoning fire orbs, it will cause all the orbs to increase in size and then explode, so you'll want to move away from these. Might of the Tengu will just be a large tank buster ability that will need to be healed through. Moving into the second area, there will be large wave AoEs that will proceed across the arena. You will want to position yourself behind the stone blockades to prevent yourself from being hit by this AoE. There will be several AoEs from the mobs also that you'll need to move yourself out of if you do not have a white mage constantly stunning them. The Jaminju shares the Bad Breath ability that most of the units of its class type also have. So you'll want to make sure you're not getting hit by this as it does a severe amount of debuffs. For the second boss, he will do several untelevised AoE based on which arm he is raising into the air. So when he raises his left arm, 
it will slam down on the right side of the platform, so you'll want to move to the left side to avoid it. When he raises his right arm, he will then slam down on the left side of the platform, so you'll readjust to the other side. When he does the circular AoEs, he will also do several small cone AoEs, and you'll just need to position yourself away from each other and out of the cone AoEs to minimize the damage received. When he says the land take you, claim you, he will mark two of your party members with AoEs that will constantly follow them around. You'll just need to continue running around the platform and making sure not to run into each other to avoid getting hit by these. When he says swallow you, consume you, he will then slam down into the center of the platform, leaving a AoE behind that you'll want to avoid standing in. This will limit the amount of area you have to move around on the platform. After this, he will slam down on the left and right sides again. So you just want to position yourself out of these AoEs. Moving into the final area, there will be a constant flow of small circular AoEs that are happening around you as you proceed through here. These will damage you and put a vulnerability up debuff on you if you are hit by them, but you can drag the units into them to cause them to be hit by them, causing them to receive the vulnerability up debuff. Dragon Bifang will have a short line AoE that you'll just want to sidestep out of. The final group of enemies will summon more enemies as the fight is almost completed. For the final boss, when he casts the short end, he will do a tank buster type ability that you'll just need to be healed through. When he casts both ends, if he extends his staff, then you will want to move under him as the AoE will hit far away from him. When he casts both ends, if he does not extend the staff, then you will want to move away from him as the AoE will be right next to him. Every time you are hit by one of these AoEs, it will apply a vulnerability up debuff that will increase the amount of damage you take. When he casts the Mount Hagwa, the ability, he will do a party-wide damaging ability that will just need to be healed through. When he goes to the center of the platform and summons the adds, you will just want to pick them up and AoE them down. The longer these adds are alive, the more monkey magicka he will absorb, causing his AoE to do more damage after the adds are dead.
When he casts Splitting Hairs, he will then split into two adds that you'll want to pick up both of them. Each of these adds will cast different abilities, so you'll want to keep an eye out for the one that extends its staff during the both ends portion so that you can get under it to avoid both AoEs. During this time, Mount Hogwell will be duplicated by both monkeys, causing you to take double the damage. When he separates into separate parts of the arena and locks onto different party members, those party members will want to move away from everyone else as he will then do a line AoE towards both of the party members. His short end tank buster will also be duplicated by both monkeys, so you'll want to make sure you're popping a tank cooldown to minimize this damage. The next time he begins casting both ends, one monkey will do a group up AoE that you'll want to position yourself to split the damage, while the other one does the proximity based AoE around himself. So you'll want to make sure that you are positioning yourself under the proximity based one, and then grouping up to avoid the damage of the other. But this should be it for the Swallow's Compass. I hope this helps everyone out. If it does, please make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel, and I will catch you on the next one.